Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to OzCastNetwork.com for details. This week at Safeway, shop the 10 for $10 produce sale. With the 10 for $10 produce sale, get items like large avocados, mangoes, green, red, orange, or yellow bell peppers, cucumbers, large lemons, or 16-ounce bags of Signature Farms baby-peeled carrots for the member price of just a dollar each. Plus, select meats like Signature Farms 80% lean ground beef and Signature Select extra meaty pork loin back ribs are buy one, get one free this week. Hurry in before these deals are gone. Visit Safeway.com for more deals. it was for the West Coast Eagles, one of the more memorable wins in the club's history. Hello to you, Nest family. It is great to have you on board. Smiling, no doubt, despite some ordinary Eagles news that we'll get into in a moment. Before we do that, though, Drew Shuey Jones joins us fresh off his exploits from the Grand Prix. Drewy, how's the taste in your mouth, mate? Uh, yeah, good. Hey, Gabby. Um, I've had all my checks. I've uh, been to the docks um, just to make sure I'm all healthy and a OK. Um, and yeah, feeling good today. Um, it was a, it was only one tiny little sip, but um, I'm sure thousands of millions of little uh, pieces of bacteria entering my mouth. Uh, well handled, firstly on live TV, an intruder. I've been in that position mm-hmm. before. It can throw you, um, but you did very well. So well done, firstly. I've never done a shoey in my life though. What does it taste like? <laughs> no, it was a seltzer. Um, okay, it's so just the, you know, one of those new age sort of, um, drinks that I wouldn't consume myself personally, but, uh, some people enjoy sort of vodka watery with a bit of flavor. Uh, so that was all fine. Uh, and I have done a shoey after doing a half marathon. Um, we said if we ran under a hundred minutes, we would all do a shoey. Um, so I did a, a bush chook, um, out of my running shoe, um, Yeah, I mean, it's not like it tastes bad because the alcohol overrides anything else. Um, But, yeah, it was honestly very spare of the moment. And when he just – when he the the fella there just sort of motioned for me to do it, I was like, bugger it, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Probably didn't think through the consequences that much um, considering consuming alcohol live on air is actually against the rules on, um, Sky News and Fox Sports News platforms. But anyway, here we are. Um, I haven't been sacked yet. So, uh, hopefully it's all good with the bosses. Uh, People don't realize how hard it can be in that situation when you're zoned in on what you're trying to say to actually think clearly and calmly. So you did that. You did the right thing. You got to just go with it in those situations. More often than not, when you bite back, it becomes more awkward and tense and it's hard to watch. So well done. I'm sure your bosses will forgive you for that. Um, nobody's really going to care too much. Amid covering the Grand Prix, did you get to uh, to Docklands on Saturday afternoon to watch an epic West Coast Eagles win, one of the finest in our proud history? Well, isn't it isn't it sad? I don't think I've missed a game in Victoria since I moved here in 2016. Um, and that includes all the horrible trips to Geelong. But uh, I work for the NBL on Saturday evenings uh, and I just can't get around that. So um, I didn't get to go to the game. I have to be at the, uh, be at the office for NBL at five o'clock going to start at four 30. So I watched the start of the game and then I very unprofessionally ignored all of my obligations towards watching basketball uh, and just watched the Eagles game on my phone. Um, and funnily enough, um, someone who was on the panel with me for the show had a large investment on Collingwood winning. Um, so we were sort of both like cheering, you know, for either side and, um, yeah, there'd be some footage stashed away somewhere of the camera that would have been recording in the studio of me celebrating goals and then the win at the end. But, um, yeah, I was, I was really disappointed to not be able to go. And then, uh, obviously when it turns out to be one of your club's best ever wins, that sucks, but overriding satisfaction um, for the players and for, for Adam Simpson and for everyone who got to be there because it was just such a, a great afternoon for the club. Simo has said so many times in the last week or two, it'll pay us back. It'll pay us back. It did on the weekend. I think he thought it would come longer term. I don't even think he thought we would necessarily win on the weekend, although that was the plan. 
But I think when he was saying that, he meant second half of the season or maybe next year. As we've spoken about, will this be the making of the club? We've got a win out of a short term, which is great. Just reward for the remarkable effort that the, the boys have put in and the fantastic attitude that they've maintained throughout a very difficult time. Unfortunately, before we get into the game with the Pies, um, the shit news just keeps on coming. It's like you think you're over the hump and you can't get over that little hurdle. Because and you think you are over that hurdle, sorry, but you just can't get over it because now we we hear that Nick Natanui is out for probably six to eight weeks with a medial. I mean, our most important player when he's up and going, it's just like, what? I mean, I don't swear often on this podcast. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, and that, that was my response today was, was a few choice words. Um, just because like, I feel like we've had more than our fair share now. So now, like everything, everything that happens now is just piling shit on top of shit. Um, and it's um, one of those unlucky ones for Nick because he comes down in the last quarter from a ruck contest and just lands awkwardly on the knee. There is a part of me that is relieved that he didn't pop the ACL Yeah, because that is the kind of incident where the ACL could go. And whether it's a fatigue issue a heavy workload for, for him in the ruck over the first few weeks and he gets a bit tired and all that sort of stuff. He's been in COVID um, protocols and we know that you're obviously not going to have your world's best preparation for a game there. So yet you, you slip behind with your prehab and rehab for one week and then maybe you're opening yourself up for, for these freak accidents to happen. So that's the sh- the really shit thing about the West coast situation right now is that not only are we missing players are missing games and they're getting injured. There's also untold circumstances where sportsmen are being forced to, to come out of isolation and then play, you know, a pretty, um, pretty tough game on the body. Um, and without, and we don't know what's going to happen out of it. And so, you know, you saw Kelly do his hamstring at training after coming back and playing a game against North Melbourne. So these things just keep piling up. Um, and he's arguably our most irreplaceable yeah. player and one of our best leaders. So that makes it hurt even more uh, going forward with that, Nick. So we haven't had to worry about it too much after, over the last two seasons because Nick has been ever present. And when he wasn't, we had Nathan Barty, who was ready made there. What do they do now? To me, it's big, bad, bustling Bailey Williams for the next six weeks. You're in there. You've got the number one ruck roll. I don't see how we can give it to Hugh Dixon or. Harry Edwards or anyone else. I think it's Bailey Williams, your job, you've got it. You're not out of the team until Nick's back, unless your form is just so deplorable that we have to make a change. So we're all behind you, mate. Go and make this, let this be the making of you. I I hope that's the way they're thinking and they they probably are, right? Tremendous opportunity for Bailey Williams, isn't it? To get a really good look at him, which we got a a little look um, when Nick missed. Was it, did Nick play the North Melbourne game? Is that the one that he missed? The Ruse game, I think. Did miss that game, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Bailey got a chance to be. And he and Williams got better as the game went on. I'm not sure how much we talked about it, but he really started to come into his own sort of certainly in the third and fourth quarter. Um, and that's promising. It's a shame that he had to miss um, the derby with the COVID protocols. And then he played, uh, him and Stranetica both played in a waffle practice game on the weekend, as did Elliot Yo. So... Williams comes back in. It's actually perfect because he has a run around, gets the COVID stuff out of his system, and now he's, he's ready to come in. And I thought Hugh Dixon was great on the weekend. Yeah. Considering he's having to go up against Grundy, I thought Dixon really, really showed he's got some potential. So that's that's definitely going to be the combo going forward. Um, and if Bailey can build on what we saw at the back part of the North Melbourne game, and if Dixon can continue to compete, then yes, uh, it sucks, but... Yeah, that's the best we can do. I mean, not having Tom Hickey or, or Vardy, like that hurts. Yeah, We don't have an experienced backup. That sucks. But I think Bailey's ready to have a crack at it now. I think he's a talent. There'll be inconsistencies. He'll have some bad games, but he's young. He's raw. He's got a bit about him. He's got mongrel. He's got a good set of hands. He's got a big heart. He's ruck craft, maybe a fair way off at the moment, but he can just provide a big contest and just run and crash and bash for the next six weeks and do a bit of work you know, in the stoppages that we, where he's, he doesn't have the biggest leap on him. I think in a ruck sense and some of the bigger ruck, but I think we'll get over the top of him, but body work, I think he'll be okay. He's strong. Um, and then when he goes forward, he does have a good, a good marking uh, game to him too. So 
I'm excited for what he for what he might bring. Anyway, we've discussed that. It's really frustrating because Nick looked good, especially in the last quarter against the Pies. But um, we have to do without him. We're used to it at least now. What a win, though, on the weekend where, again, certain players just stood up so well and the collective, Drewy, the, the system and the structure was just so incredibly strong. And we knocked over the Pies again in Melbourne. We are their nemesis over there more often than not. They hate us over here. They hate it. They've even moved the game from the MCG to Marvel. Still didn't work. Yeah. Um, so I've chatted to. Final, but yeah, we got it. Yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> chatting to a couple of mates who were there. Boy, oh boy, the Pies fans, they were hating it. They were losing their minds. They were yelling at the umpires, at their own players. Obviously, they were getting a bit lippy with, with West Coast fans. Then there's always that pocket. Of, I think it's, it's like a forward pocket, half forward flank of Marvel where all the Eagles members and family members and stuff, they all congregate in one spot. But then you get the the sprinkling of Eagles fans around the ground. And those are the ones that would have been doing it a little bit tougher. Um, but God, I love beating Collingwood. Like it just feels that good. So, and it's been awesome the last few years. Like the some of the games between the teams have been really great. And they gave us a, a fair hiding. It was the last season. It was almost our worst game of the season last year. They they absolutely destroyed us yeah. late in the year. I think it was at the Olympics. Um, but we've, yeah, we've enjoyed, I reckon, the more substantial, important wins in finals and then um, a stirring one on Saturday. So is it our best ever win outside of finals footy? Oh, I mean, look, recency bias and, and the need for – Big claim sometimes overrides a strong memory when it comes to these discussions. There might be better ones. I don't know. But it's got to be right up there when you look at the players that were out. And not only the players that were out this week, but the players that have been out this season, which really affects your continuity. So no Yo, no Sheed, no Kelly, no Shuey, no Gaff, no Cripps, no Allen, no Cole, no Petrovsky seeden Those are nine of our best 22, including, and this is the most important part, our on-ball brigade. The only true recognised on-baller that we had was Jack Redden. I know O'Neill and West were there, but West doesn't play on-ball all the time. Xavier has, has barely been in the team. So the only recognised one is Jack Redden, and we knocked over Collingwood on their own turf with that. I mean, that is just quite incredible. That's the aspect of it that has it up there in one of our best ever wins. The fact that we just had such a threadbare midfield. Yeah, it's hard for a round four game to be considered, you know, one of the most important or the, I guess it depends what word you want to use. It's one of the, it's probably one of the most stirring victories by an Eagles team. It's, it's maybe the most backs to the wall win in the club's history. And I say that, having not been able to watch games in the very early days of West Coast. And I reckon there would have been some real backs to the wall stuff early because of how unfair the fixturing was traveling by like Eagles probably in those days were playing consecutive games or in a row in Melbourne. Um, and to think they would have had to get up for traveling multiple weeks and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, things were against them. There would have been some moments early days, but in the true professional modern era of the AFL, if that's the most you can have thrown at you yeah. because of the quite ridiculous circumstances that the club find themselves in, then you throw in the fact that we had the injury crisis before the COVID crisis hits. Um, it's, it's quite incredible, really. Yeah. Let's not forget, Colling Collingwood have started the season really well. They were two and one, and they really only played one bad quarter against Geelong. So they've, they've pretty much been, you know, 15 for 16 in terms of quarters performed this season. Um, and clearly the, they were flat early, the Pies, and they obviously took the game too easy. And I don't blame them for that because everyone was telling them how much of a walkover it was going to be. I don't think even the most optimistic West Coast fans thought that the Eagles were going to win. So I just wanted to throw a couple of games at you that I've just thought off the top of my head um, that, I've, that have been great victories in recent times during the regular season. Obviously, 2006 comeback against Geelong. Yeah. yeah. That one will always be in the annals. Yeah. That was also one of the greatest Eagles teams of all time. Yeah. So it's a, it's on a different exactly spectrum, but also to win it, winning a game for us at Cadenia Park, big deal. 2007, round one, I don't know if you remember, coming off the 
premiership, we played the Swans at Stadium Australia in round one. And remember how Robert Walls wrote that article and said, I hope the Swans belt us by 100 points and it's the good guys beating the bad guys. And, you know, Ben, ben Cousins had had his issues in the off-season, Chad Fletcher, all that stuff had happened. And we won by like one or two points. I don't know if you remember Daniel Kerr, ran down Jared McVeigh on the 50 meter line to help yeah. win us the game. And the Swans yeah. were coming hard. Yeah. Anyway, that was a really stirring win. Um, Juddy had the groin problems. We weren't at our best short preseason, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, 2009, some, someone brought this to our attention uh, on the, uh, via the, via Twitter. And then it just j- jogged this memory for me. So we beat the Western Bulldogs at Marvel Stadium, you know, Telstra Donors was known probably in those days. And um, we were 2009, I think we were pretty terrible. May have finished down the bottom. And um, Hearn had a big game. I think Andrew Embley kicked four or five goals. Anyway, it was a really great win against a very good Western Bulldogs team. But um, someone made the point, it sort of, it was this nice grounding for us to to rise back up the ladder in the next couple of years. And obviously we got to the, the prelim in 2011. Um, but a backs to the wall win in Melbourne when the team was struggling. And it just jogged this memory of my mate who used to work at West coast. He actually, he got the DVD of that game for me, like from the, the, you know, from the tape library section at the club and brought it home for me so I could rewatch it. So I think I'd missed it anyway. Um, but it, it's hard to think of too many off the top of your head during the regular season that have been better than that. That's probably the, the point that I'm getting at. There's one that stands out for me. I remember watching it in 1998 when we played the Bulldogs at the Wacker Ground, round 10 it was. I've just looked it up. Mm. We were down by 48 points a quarter time, eight goals, four to four behinds, and we came Jeez. back to win that game. That was a, a, a Mick Malthouse rates it as his best win outside of finals for the Eagles, the way in which yeah. we turned things around in that season. And then a lot of people talk about, the Eagles win over the Saints at the Wacker Ground in 1990. We were down by 44 points. Um, Troy Eugle went from defence to attack kick seven? the game and kicked six goals to help six. us win by 18 yeah. points. A lot of people say that was the game that, you know, really got us to that next level and then inspired the premierships of 91, 92, that real deep-seated belief. So those are two that stands out. I think this sits comfortably amongst them um, for sure. So... Yeah, we should be very proud of it, very proud of it. And, and some players who stood up in this in this game, we'll get to the Nest medal votes in a moment, but you know, Xavier O'Neill's a player we've discussed at length and someone that's frustrated us. I'm People will know I've been a Xavier O'Neill fan, but I thought he's got more to offer and his possession numbers have just been down. He had 24 on the weekend. He got his hands on the footy a lot and he dished it out in the clinches. So he stood up alongside Jack Redden in and under and helped farm the ball out for the likes of Nash and Rioli and Duggan and the others to then go and help us win the game. Just massive credit to him for the, the football match that he had. It was such an important role. Yeah, I, I was impressed. And, yeah, the game matched the role. So he was able to play to his strengths um, and given significant midfield time. I think I looked at today 13 centre bounce attendances, which would be a career high for him, I'm sure. Um, yeah, uh, I thought he was good. I didn't have him in my best five, but he was impressive on the day. And I know a lot of people, a lot of Eagles fans, a lot of Nest listeners rated his game really highly. Um, I'll give you one and you can give me another yep. in terms of who you're impressed by. I, I just absolutely loved Hugh Dixon's game. I know I've mentioned yep. him already. 16 disposals. He laid four tackles and he battled really manfully against Grundy in the ruck. But his second and third efforts were awesome. So I rewatched the, the fourth quarter today in, this morning while I was drinking my coffee. And there was like a five or 10 minute period where Dixon was our most important player because he was defensively pushing back and impacting marking contests. And then he was getting up the line, making an option outside of, you know, Josh Kennedy and Darling, um, who for their own reasons were probably getting tired towards the end of the game. He got a holding the ball in defensive 50, tackled one of their players who was bearing down on goal. Um, He took a contested mark or something similar or close to that in the front half, turned around, you know, went back behind the mark and then hit Darling, lace out inside 50, and then Darling kicked the goal. So Dixon didn't just influence the game in the way that we would hope, which is jumping up in the air and bringing the ball to ground and doing your job as a forward. He actually got around the ground and did stuff. Um, and he's tough. He's just got something about him, which I like. Yeah. Um, and apparently quite popular with the players. Um, 
and likes a beer and stuff. So, you know, I'm all for that. So, yeah, Hugh Dixon, big tick. The player I want to bring forward, and he didn't make it into my votes and he didn't get near the votes, I don't think, but I reckon he shut a few critics up with his game on the weekend, is Zachary Langdon. Mm. I thought he was really good. So a big stat for me is score involvements. He had seven, equal most with Liam Ryan. To go with as well, um, Zach Langdon, 15 disposals, a goal, six marks, a couple of really important marks. There was that moment, second quarter where he got it, centre-half forward, spun quickly, left foot, hit Liam Ryan on his chest for a big goal. His creativity was really important. He doesn't kick the ball far. He doesn't have penetration in his kick. That's his major weakness in his game. But he runs his backside off. He's a smart footballer. He's quick thinking. When he gets the ball in his hands, he's quick to make a decision. He doesn't dwell on it. And more often than not, he makes the right decision. He's got a ceiling on his talent. But I just, I don't know, I like him in the team. I always have. I just think he gives us a lot. He's got a lot of heart and he's creative. I thought he had a really big game. Loved his game. Um, shout out to Brady Hoff, 23 pressure acts. Um, and he, boy, he's composed for a bloke who's played three games of senior footy. Loved what he gave us. Connor West in the, the middle was tough. Obviously, his disposal is the, is the big knock on him. He's not super clean um, when he has the ball, but tackles, pressures, plays his role really well. Jermaine Jones, only six disposals. He laid five tackles. That tackle on Jamie Elliott was a momentum changer. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, not, it's sad for Jamie that he's now injured and has to have surgery in his shoulder. But that's the kind of thing that we don't see West Coast players do that often. Like Willie does it. Bailey Williams does it. Jermaine does it. They tackle hard. Like they tackle players to the ground like to hurt, um, which I enjoyed. Um, do you think Alex Witherden had his best game for the club? Yeah, I think he's had a couple of good ones. But he had a big widow game. Yeah, I think he's had a, a couple where we've gone, yeah, that was his best game for the club. It might have been in line with them. But, yeah, he st- the reason why this might stick out more than any others is because, you know, we're down for numbers and he has to lift and he did. He had 27 disposals, seven marks. Um, and he's, his ability to get us moving and adapt what is a new game plan is so important. 488 metres gained. That's so important because you know, we're trying to get up the field quicker and his kicking ability allows us to do so. And he executed so well. Yeah, I just thought he was better when the ball was on the ground in yeah. defence. Yeah. So his, def- his, his defensive work, his contested work uh, was, was improved and he won a couple of 50-50 balls. Um, yeah, we know that. He, he'll have the odd shocker like he had against North, but by and large, use of the ball is good and he's reliable when we're working the ball out of defence. But I just liked the other stuff a bit more from him, especially when the game was on the line. Um, I know Paddy Nash will get a mention in the votes, but, yeah. I mean, isn't it just crazy how far it's come along with him involved in this team? Like he's now, he's now must pick. And he's been probably one of our best players over the first four rounds of the season. This bloke wasn't on our team five weeks ago or six weeks ago. Like, it's yeah. insane. It just he was in like Melbourne. He couldn't get to WA because of the borders. And it's the crazy. Thing about, the thing about it is, I was thinking, he, he would make probably three quarters of the team in, teams in the AFL, right, at the moment. So it's not that he's just playing for us because we're down on numbers. On form, he would play for many teams. Maybe not the Demons, maybe not Brisbane, but a fair few outside of those two, I reckon, um, on form. So it just sums up how easy it is to be glossed over in the AFL. Uh, he yeah. was fantastic. I like Connor West's game, 16 possessions, four tackles, another one who was really tough in and under. Let's go through the votes because we don't have much time. We want to go through the changes for the Sydney game and our prospects there. But um, Jeremy McGovern was the obvious five vote getter. He was just superb. He's the best defender in the comp again, Drewy. He's the best in the comp again. Stephen May might be right up there with him for some, but he gets a lot of protection from his midfielders and defence. Jeremy McGovern doesn't get that. He doesn't get anywhere near the protection, and he's playing like a colossus down there. Best in the comp again. So he's the five. You can reel off the rest from the Nest Middle listeners. Yeah, McGovern all Australian this year. I think we agree on that. Uh, Rioli four, Nash three, Tom Barras two, and 
Xavier O'Neill with one vote. Was your were your five similar to that, Garby? Just quickly. Yeah, I had I had Scuv, Willie, Nash three. I had Xavier with two and Nick with one. So Barras was my unlucky to miss out. I just thought, you know, having Gov down there maybe helped him a little bit. He could have been in. But I, I just love the fact that Xavier stood up in a position where we needed massive support. That was really important. So he got in the votes for me. I think without his game, we're up against it a bit more. And then Nick's last quarter, just a couple of his clearances were so important when the game was up for grabs. Um, I thought it helped us win the game. So he just squeezed in ahead of Tommy B for me. Um, but that leaves us. Let's update the Ness medal as it stands, because we didn't do a podcast last week. We apologise. We just got completely tied up. So the medal votes against Frio were McGovern 5, Hearn 4. Uh, some people didn't want to give votes after that, <laughs> which is fair mm-hmm. enough, but I went through them anyway. Natanui got three, Naish got two, and Gaff got one. That means after four rounds of the season, Jeremy McGovern, a runaway leader on 16 Ness medal votes, Willie Rioli in second on 10, Paddy Nash, third in the Ness medal. Can you believe it? Signed a week before the season on six votes. And then Jermaine Jones, five from his game against the Gold Coast. Heard on four, Redden on four, and then a bunch of players below them. So, Gov leading the way. Let's talk about the Swannies this week. Drewy, who do you see coming in? What are our chances of winning? Yeah, so Shuey and Kelly, I think, are definitely going to play. All going well due, you know, with COVID and fitness tests and stuff. Um, and then... Elliot Yo played that one game in the Waffle Reserve. So whether they give him one more, do you think they'll they'll probably feel a little better about not rushing everyone back, given how well all of the you know so-called replacements played? So maybe they give Xavier another week in the midfield and get Yo absolutely cherry ripe. I mean, it's, I mean we don't know when on the inside, um, but I think we'll definitely see Kelly Shuey, and then I think Cripps might be a chance. Um, but other than that, I reckon there's probably only three or four changes coming. I would yeah. guess. Obviously, Nick's out, Bailey in as well. Exactly. Would, and then would Luke you Hanley. risk Elliot? Um, yeah, I would. I'd bring him in if he played in the waffle on the weekend. I think he he can do a job like he did last season, where he didn't play. He played sixty five percent in his first game or two back. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. only a, it's a calf. It's not the OP again. So if you got through the waffle on the weekend, yeah, I think he's right. Another big week on the track. I'd bring him back in. So I think Yo, Kelly, Shuey all come back in, as does Petrevsky, Seaton. Um, who goes out then? Well, Luke Edwards goes out. He's another one who deserved to mention. Really good considering the lack of preparation he's had this preseason. He's but, good. Um, yeah, he goes out with a, with a little injury. Hard to know who else goes out along with him. I mean, maybe Brady Hoff drops out as, as good as he was. Um, it's tough to bring players out of the team after that. So they're going to have a tough decision to make. Maybe Jakey Waterman, he kicked a big goal late, but only eight disposals. They usually drop him. Maybe Jake makes way again. Um, maybe Sam petrovsky sitting doesn't come back in. Maybe it's just Yo, Kelly, Shuey, Bailey Williams, and it's just four changes. What do you think about that? And Nat Nui. We're throwing him in as well. Yeah, so Bailey Williams, uh, Nat Nui, and then Yo, Kelly, and Shuey yeah. in for, say, um, Edwards, Hoff, and Waterman. Yeah. And Rotham definitely won't come in after being sub. Um, I don't see I'm who else looking, you drop after that. I'm just looking through who would be. I mean, always there's a chance that some, like a little niggle is going to pop up later in the week. Yeah, yeah of course there's no reason, the, no reason. What about Josh Kennedy off now consecutive six-day breaks? I think you've got to play him in a home game. A game there for the taking, we have to. Like Sydney uh, missing Franklin, Papley's still out. You know, Hickey. I don't know if Hickey yeah. in the ruck. Like, it's a chance to get another win Friday night at home. No, you got to play Josh. Yeah, and look, to be honest, I'm not – I don't like taking Waterman out of the team all the time. No. But then you, you, he's probably the one that has to go out, I think. And, like, unless you want to drop Darling. But he showed some signs in that last quarter. He took a couple of marks, kicked a couple of goals. So it's like, you don't want to arrest that momentum that maybe you're getting back with Jack. So if Kennedy's right to go, then yeah, I think that you've probably nailed it. I think that's I think that's what they'll do. Can we win? We don't have much time, but yeah, I watch Sydney pretty closely. I'll go first in on this. I think I think we can knock them off. Like without Franklin, they've got McLean and Logan McDonald who'll play up forward. Matt, yeah, and Sammy Reid. Sammy Reid played Sammy on the Reed weekends. Good on the weekends, but we can handle them with McGovern and Barras in their form. We can. 
the, the worry is you've got to, you've got to stop Isaac Heaney. I think Jackson Nelson is the perfect matchup for Isaac Heaney. I hope Simo said to him on Monday, put a poster of Isaac Heaney up on your wall because that's all you're thinking about all week. You're playing on him when he goes through the midfield and when he goes up forward, you've got the height to match him and you can just set yourself to lock him down because if you lock Heaney down, you're a chance to keep the Swans quiet. Because if you can, our big man can can stop McLean and McDonald and Reed because they're just playing that well down there. Um, I think we can perhaps get at them that way. That's our that's our best chance is if we stop Isaac Heaney, who is their match winner. Got to stop their young blokes getting it up, getting it on the outside. Chad yeah. Warner coming back to play in front of his family. Got to stop him from getting it. Got to stop Goulden from getting out on his left foot. Braden Campbell getting out on the outside. Ollie Florent. This season has played a couple of good games when he's been given time and space. So don't let that happen. We barely let that happen in the Collingwood game. It was played in tight and West Coast always structured up well against Collingwood moving the ball quickly. So that's what I'll have to replicate, I think, to get the Swans. Lucky that Hickey's not playing. So Laddams looked pretty crap on the weekend. and They'll probably give him another chance. Yeah. Um, Heaney, scary at times when the ball hits the ground. He's good in the air. Remember that the, when Bud kicked the thousand? I think didn't Heaney snap three goals on his left foot in that game? Like he, he kicked five. Yeah, when the, yeah, and three of them were left foot snaps. I reckon so. It's whoever plays on him is going to be all over him. You got to like, tag all him. over him. They've got to yeah. tag him. Like give Nelson the job. It's the perfect matchup because he goes through the middle a lot, a lot, and we know Nelson can run through there. And then he's obviously comfortable at half back. So you've got to tag him in the situation we're in right now. That, to me, that makes complete sense. Yeah, they've got a lot of good midfielders, so they can burn us there, and their defence is really settled. They'll probably go in narrow favourites, but I think we can win. They're not playing that well. North almost got them on the weekend. They were average against the Dogs. They should have lost that game by five, six goals. They're yeah. not tracking as well as they, they should be based on their talent and where they'll probably be at the end of the season. Yeah, a couple of six-day breaks for both teams, so no one's going to be super fresh. That's okay. It's going to be a good game. Good Friday in Perth. First time ever, I would suggest. Can't so wait get for out it. To the, yeah, get out to the game and enjoy it, everyone, please. Beautiful. Been an enjoyable Nest Medal Nest episode with the Nest Medal votes updated after a, a very big win in the club's history. Thank you very much, Drewy. Have a good week, my friend. On you, Gabby. This week at Safeway, shop the 10 for $10 produce sale. With the 10 for $10 produce sale, get items like large avocados, mangoes, green, red, orange, or yellow bell peppers, cucumbers, large lemons, or 16-ounce bags of Signature Farms baby-peeled carrots for the member price of just a dollar each. Plus, select meats like Signature Farms 80% lean ground beef and Signature Select extra meaty pork loin back ribs are buy one, get one free this week. Hurry in before these deals are gone. Visit Safeway.com for more deals. Love this podcast? Support it and sponsor today. Simply head to oscastnetwork.com for details.